What's good? What's good? Welcome to the Epic Entertainment Critics. I am Antoine. And I am still James. We're here to bring you an epic review on Fargo, Episode 8. Season 4, Episode 8. We have been keeping up with our reviews. Um, uh, we have uh, Fargo, Episode 1 through 7, already up on the channel. Check it out. Um, but we are going to do Episode 8 today. Um, we'll be... We'll be doing it right after our intro. All right. We are we have returned. Okay, Fargo, episode eight, season four, episode eight. Uh, see, I got a um, Swanee and a um, Zamara up there, man, because uh, we had something happen, man. You know, and as we said, as the season going on, it's only eleven episodes, so as the season going on, it's, it's, it's you know Fargo, character's gonna die, and yeah. so we're gonna have to, and then it's close to the end, so we're gonna have to start getting some people out of there. Yeah. Um, and you know, I knew this was gonna come to a. a Tool, not at just the end, but I knew it was going to be kind of a tragic end. When I first saw these curves, I said, yeah, this ain't yeah. going to be well the way they come I in. mean, one, there's only so much room in the finale, yeah. so we got to pare it down a little bit. Right. But also just the kind of lifestyle these characters lead. Yeah. Uh, so, and then they got, when they keep showing death, I know that plus the means something, I'm not even sure. I guess they call him Mr. Snowman or something okay. in the credits, but mm. whatever. <laughs> we'll get to that. All right, so episode eight. Um, where we left off is uh, last episode uh, between the two feuding families. Josto uh, talked to the, the cannon gang and told them that Gitano killed their uh, uh, killed uh, Lloyd's son, and um, and uh, um, he asked Lloyd to go ahead take out Gitano and that'd make him even. Uh, I guess Josto thought that was gonna work, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and uh, let's see, Otis is uh, now working for the Lloyd gang, and um, they <clears throat> uh, let go of um, Gitano and also um, the Smutneys, um, where the the funeral home is belongs to the Cannons now, and yeah. uh, Lemuel is now, I, I guess he's living there working now. Working there at least. Well, yeah, because I was thinking that, but I'm thinking basically he got him Handling stash, right? He stash. got him. He's there. I think he's like he's running the business there. Yeah, they got him handling intake and what. Right, so he's probably like doing the books and because they showed him bringing in stuff. Yeah, and uh, other people's like, is he just bringing in? A, he just carrying boxes? I'm like, no, he's bringing his stuff in there, you know. And I think he's setting mm. up shop, you know. Because like I think they're setting that that place up to work as di like distribution because who's going to look in the camera? Right, right. I'm, I'm pretty sure this, this is going to be one of their businesses now. Yeah. And they setting up shop. They, you know, so they moving all their stuff in there and uh, you know, Lemieux probably going to run that, you know. And maybe die. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying why he's there. Yeah. And of course he uh, strike up a uh, a rapport with uh, Ethel, Ethel Rita. Rita. Yeah. And, God, you know, you they're about the same age, so we kind of see it coming. But they don't really have time for them. To me, they don't have time nah. for them to really get a good, <laughs> strong romance. Um, you know, maybe we can do something, but it's, I feel like they just met each other. They're the same age, and we can see them maybe hooking up. But I'm like, if y'all do some more, oh, I love him. You just met him yesterday, <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Daddy, I love him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> These girls fall in love quick, though. Anyway, so the uh, basically the episode start off where we actually we get to find out uh, with Josto. I I guess he think he got it made. Yeah. Because he basically I don't know if he go to celebrate, but he he's you know banging Olietta. Um, that's his, and they they having they keep going kinkier. Well, like she introduced him to the joys of autoerotic asphyxiation. Right, they doing there with him, and I'm thinking you don't want to go there with her, but you know he's loving it. You know mm. it's something new. Like, I feel like we know how he's gonna die, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they go uh, every every episode. They go to a new level yeah. of the way they uh fucking uh where. Now she she got a tie, she tie his hands up and got a pillow over his face. Yeah. This is how we come in. 
Uh, she's uh, you know, they hooking up, and we get some backstory on both of them though. Yeah. And I don't know if you uh pay attention to all of it, but um, uh, I forget that Josto was um uh, got um um okay. traded to the Irish. Yeah. Um, when he was a kid, I I forgot that Josto was the one who did who had to do that. Um, uh, but he he the one who uh, I thought see so that makes him younger than uh, or maybe what's name wasn't born yet, uh, Gitano. I thought it was your youngest son. He might not have been born yet, I think. Yeah, maybe. So anyway, um, and Josto said that um, it was like a throwaway line. He didn't seem like he was making a big deal, but he said, the devil is an Irishman. He did some weird stuff. He did sick stuff to me. So I'm thinking, oh, man, so maybe they was just trying to insinuate without saying all the way. Maybe Josto got molested or something as a child. That's how I took it anyways. Right. Uh, And I was like, damn. Uh, but he, the way he kind of said it, it just wasn't even like a big deal, you know. It well, wasn't no, like, like a, it, when he was saying it. Like I think he was trying to bond with her, over yeah. It, and he was trying to take the edge off it. But like even as he was saying it, it looked like he was starting to remember stuff he didn't want to remember. Maybe, like because yeah. he seemed a little haunted at the end there, and then she took him out of it by by kind of going off on him. Right. Well, uh, before that, she was talking about her backstory, where it's uh, he asked her, you know. Um, why you a nurse? And or she was like, you know, I got to be because, you know, I, I forget exactly what she said, but I know she basically alluded to her mother poisoning her as a child, and she kept her sick. She said her mom kept giving her juice. The juice yeah, kept her her and, special juice, right? Yeah. And and that basically f- for her, she think that was something that her mom was doing. For us, that's telling me she had like Munchausen syndrome, where where you got people that are keep their kids sick just so they yeah. keep taking care of them. You know, that I mean that's how I read it. You know like even the way she described it was like she just had this sort of malaise and she couldn't keep food down. And I think even to this day I don't know if she fully understands it, but that's what was going on. Right, down. and that and that kinda give me that kind of makes sense on why she do why she do what she is and how she you know what I'm saying? This sort of sort of explanation of what kind of person she is. You know, yeah. she had a messed up childhood where she thought it was normal. You know, and she do all this crazy stuff. And so they both kind of messed up. You know, it was like, okay, Josto, you know, had got had a trouble pass. She had a trouble pass. And then that. Match and, made in hell. Right. <laughs> Why do you say that? Some people think that uh, Olietta's supposed to be like the devil or something. <laughs> I was listening to all the podcasts. They was like, yeah, Olietta's probably the devil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, um, yeah, and uh, it was funny that, um, uh, uh, you know, they, they kind of tell their stories or whatever. And um, um, oh, the other check on the doctor to make sure he's dead. Now, I wonder, was she going to be like, I got some good news for you or whatever? And they was like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he's made a full recovery. And he's like, oh. She's like, oh, what? No, did did they tell her that yet? Or uh, they just say he wasn't dead. Uh, so she found out that uh, the administrator Dr. wasn't Harvard. dead. Dr. Harvard. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> hospital administrator wasn't dead. And uh, so she, I guess she was going to go finish the job. Right. But um, but <laughs> first, Jostle told her he was uh, married. No, he was engaged. Yeah. And the way he told her, he's like, yeah, I'm engaged. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot to tell you, I'm engaged. <laughs> She's like, what? Uh, he's like, no that's, big deal, you like, know. Like, he really a, thought it was, was like no big a, deal. Uh, great, like, re- revelation moment for their relationship because, like, Ah, don't worry about it. It was, it was something my dad said. It's nothing. It's like, well, do you love her? <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, but right. Like, and then when he tried to tell her he loved her, like, she went right. off like, Yeah, oh, no, she no. got real mad. I was like, is she mad that he's married or is she just mad because what the news, because the information she got, she already on edge. Right. You know, it's just like, is she just mad because of that or is she just mad because he didn't tell her she got married or whatever? Yeah. I don't know. And then he started like, "Oh, you dames!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, um, if he only knew what he was dealing with. Yeah, I'm like, dude, you should get out while you can. But of course, he don't know. He actually told her he loved her. Yeah, and it, it was kind of like I'm not sure if he meant it because he kind of like, I, I, well, like even though I he think said he it, did, but he don't know how to say that. He said like, "I, I love you," I guess. Right. Well, no, he just said first. He said, "I kind of like you." I mean, I what I'm saying, I love you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she like, oh, well, you better get out of here. And he's like, uh, don't be here when I get back. 
And he was like, oh, come on, you crazy dame. <laughs> but um, that was funny. But she already, like, she on edge. And we, and we as the audience thinking, like, oh, it's your ass only. Because <laughs> I was already thinking. Remember, we had this conversation. What if he don't die? Because he yeah. wasn't dead when she left out that room. And I was like, I don't see how she going to get out of this anyway. Uh, right. Even if he did die, I felt like it was going to get back to her or whatever. He still though, had a cookie in his mouth. I will say, I called it on the strict nine. What's that? Oh, that's what they said. Yeah. That he used that she used. Oh, okay. <laughs> and again, don't 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 ask questions about why I know anything about poisons. It's not important. Okay. So um <laughs> I got so, a morbid curiosity. But said so, no, she go to the hospital to finish the job, as you said. And when she hit there, now this was an exposition exposition dump, but this nurse knew way too much. <laughs> <laughs> so she talked to a random nurse, and she just told him, told uh, Oliette about, yeah, she, uh, he's going, uh, he's he made a full recovery, and he's been put in a witness protection program, and he's going. To, well, no, like, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that. It was, uh, well, he was poisoned. They they said it's strychnine poisoning. Yeah, he's he's uh he's not going to die. But they moved him out of state for uh, better care until mm-hmm. he can recover enough to name his assailant. Right, and then she said he's in witness protection. Too. She didn't. She didn't say witness. Oh, protection. I heard. I remember hearing that. She said he's in witness protection because he huh. was poisoned and not. It wasn't okay. like a heart attack. So they th- they basically they know that somebody tried to kill him. So now he's in not witness protection. He's in police protection because mm. they think somebody's gonna try to come back and finish the job or whatever. Right. Oh, and that's right, because they said they think it it has something to do with the uh, attempted shooting. Right, yeah. So she, well, of course, when he wake up, she he probably tell uh, yeah. who did it or whatever. But she would be in the clear if he don't wake up, right? You know, or be so able long to talk. as he dies. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I love the scene where she go back home. She's like, "What?" Uh, and it's like they may seem like all the other kind of oblivious to what's going on. She wasn't that stupid. She went no, home, started packing, packing. Like, hey, I got to go <laughs> until she so, happened upon a. Okay, but we all saw this. This is what I kind of don't like. They said they did set this up. Like they did take a while to get to this, but we already knew. Once she saw the notebook, she was going to piece together it was um, at the reader. Yep. But it's like, y'all set it up, and it happened exactly as y'all set it up. Like, we, like, nobody was surprised. There could have at least she, been a fake out. Yeah, I know, because it was too obvious. You know, um, she left the notebook, and the fact that Oli, uh, not Oli, uh, uh, after these names, <laughs> and the fact that at the reader don't know that her notebook is missing. It's been a couple of days. Yeah. After a while, you should be like, oh, sh- uh, damn, where's my journal? Or notebook or whatever, you know. Um, at this point, I'll be like, "Oh man, I left it." Oh, I left it in a serial killer house. <laughs> That's gonna come back to me. I better go get that. A serial killer who lives right across the street. Yeah. So she think she in a clear or something because after Rita, they pl- they play it off like she's smart, but like that's some dumb stuff. Because my thing is this: like, take all the risk that you would have you would ascribe to trying to call out a serial killer. Yeah. Add that to the person living across the street from you and has already tried to poison you. Yeah, I mean, the, with the pie, you already know she's on. You know she killed people. And at that point, um, you should be so on guard, you know, that one, um, you know, uh, leaving your notebook and taking stuff from her thing, that's going to come straight back to like, you. Nobody else was in her house. Like, if I crack open a soda and she looks too interested in me watch, me drinking it, I ain't drinking that mug. Yeah, so uh, let's get to... Uh, now, Lloyd wasn't in there that much. She was in there a little bit. Uh, let's get to, basically, I guess we can get to, like, Otis and Deffy. Mm. Um, where, uh, and, you know, and let's say... Uh, I don't want to say what happened, but... Um, I, Deffy, is, I love that character. Like, I just like... I just like... He just like what I, um, Tim, Timothy Oliphant is the name yeah, of the character. Timothy Oliphant. He plays such a great lawman, and everybody he play a lawman and everything. Well, like he even what was that show? Justified. Yeah, he's in Justified yeah. as a as a lawman. He was just in the Mandalorian as the marshal yeah. or whatever. But and he's always a lawman who's a little too polite, but an asshole about. But it. see that the thing is, he's he seems that competent dude that. He say stuff that 
seems like it don't matter, but it's very relevant. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. he seems like, I, he seems like he, and they call him deaf because he only hear what he want to hear. <laughs> because I, it seems like he's he got this narrow view of the world, but he's, he still know exactly what's going like, on. Like that's the thing I like about him is like he's not like blindly ignorant. He's willfully ignorant, but not blindly ignorant. Right. You know, like at one point, like he was talking. I think it was Otis he was talking to, and he acu- basically accused him of. of uh, playing both sides, like what well, he was right what, though. What did you say? <laughs> no, no, that's my game now. Right. You know what I said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like he see he seems to like catch everything. So he goes to Lloyd and basically said, "Hey, where are the women?" And this is what I was like. I was wondering, like, was he? Is he um, just tired of waiting? Yeah. Because uh, it's to a point where he could have done this long time ago. Because he know they got him. Once once he took them from the hotel, he kind of just – and I guess this may be kind of smart. Wait before you make a move. Mm-hmm. And he basically came to Lloyd and was like, I want, I need the women. And, you know, at first he said no, but I kind of just like how Def, he kind of – he give you little speeches and tell you stuff, but he'd say somebody that give away their son for power and, you know, you can't have that much loyalty because you give away your own family. Yeah. So – what the hell you care about two strangers that 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 will bring more heat on your organization? Give me them, and you won't never see me because I just want them, and I'm done with your ass. And yeah. I was like, that's that's real. I you mean, know? it's kind of that whole classic, you know, murder cop goes goes to the drug dealer to find out who kills him. Look, I'm not a vice cop. I'm looking for killers. Right, you and know. then and then Lloyd kind of like you know I gave him with my words like. What good is your word? You gave up your kid. But, man, he just gave you this, this speech about criminals, and I'm like, that's some real shit, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just but, like, because it's like uh, Lloyd said, like, he's, you know, uh, when Daffy tries to say, well, you know, us Mormons, we're, 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 we're real polite folk. No, you're very impolite, <laughs> but it's the way you're impolite. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of Daffy's whole thing. Like, that whole speech was like, this might interest you. This, this is some good stuff. It's yeah. Like, but he's basically saying the whole thing. You a rat bastard, and I need you to know you a rat bastard. Yeah. So let's stop acting like you ain't a rat bastard and tell me where those women are. Right. And, he, you know, and I, t- and I also like to boot, he quick drawed. Uh, I oh, don't yeah. know his. Um, I can't remember home, Homeboy's name. His, uh, basically, I mean, once he was there, and uh, I don't know what made him draw, but for some reason he went for his gun, and definitely got his gun out before uh, he did. Lloyd said, we're done, we're done here. You need to leave. Uh, yeah. And that was, well, yeah. So, uh, whatever dude made a move and he draws so quick, like, hey, you know, he I might, might get me, but he gonna. I die. might just, boy, well, I mean, I might just be like some Mormon preacher or whatever, but I'm handy with the steel, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, he, he's a Mormon, so of course. Oh, <laughs> uh, but you know, I just, you know, I was like, man, I, I know he kind of put let, it out let there. Let me then. not say too much about Mormonism. Well. I, well, you know, it's an open kill order on uh, all Mormons. No, I'm joking. But that was they said that on a. That's actually a real thing. Like in Missouri or like certain states, they yeah. had like an open kill order. Yeah. If you see any Mormons on site, take them out or whatever. That's yeah. They said that didn't that didn't end to like the seventies or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, Mormonism versus the world, man. Right. So anyway, um, uh, so you know, he got he know where they at now. And uh, as we know on the last episode, where we was, I was surprised that um, Lloyd uh, just gave them a ticket to uh, leave town. Why would he help them? I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, they, I mean, they did a favor for him, but to me, they were not done. They was perfect. one of your like, best wild Honestly, cards. if he had just said, "No, nah, y'all need to be, y'all need to be gone. Y'all need to get out of town," it would have worked out better. Yeah, because they, they would have just disappeared. Yeah, uh, but you know, they go to the train station, so we got. A big epic scene. This kind of remind me of Untouchables. I don't know if you're yeah, familiar with that yeah. one, where they had a big shootout in the train station. But the difference of this uh, shootout and that shootout was they they got all innocent bystanders. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, we got Swanee and Zamira. Now they are on the train in the train station, and um, uh, I, I, did, I did like where she was like buying the sweets, and then she did say something to her. Them sweet two gonna kill you one day. Yeah. Or whatever, so we know something about to happen, and they uh, and the day she walk up by like, What can I get for you, sir? Like, like she really like a dude, anyway. Um, 
She tries. Yeah. I did. I like also. She like. I'm like, give me that right there, and she turn. He, she pour all that shit in her pocket. Oh, yeah. She so <laughs> she she so half of his front row from him. I know it was kind of it was like like for you didn't see that. <laughs> it was like she she wasn't even still. Like, it, it wasn't like she was like let me get this and this. It was she put the whole like just, stack. <laughs> yeah, like she was still putting it back when he turned around, man. Yeah, and so anyway, Daffy <laughs> caught up to him at the train station. Oh, yeah. let's not forget. Let's not forget. Uh, after Deffy gets in, he starts setting up his squad to go in. <laughs> I think you're going to bring up the joke. Mm. Oh, go ahead. Finish it. I was just going to say, uh, what did you say they call him? Mr. Snowman? Yeah. He shows up. Did he show up at the? At the train station. Yeah, I saw that. I was going to get to that. Uh, I just, I, I, the one, only time I remember seeing him, he could have been in the background. The only time I remember seeing him. Because uh, Swanee saw right, be- right, right before the shooting started. Yeah. Now, but I was the joke I was going to say was, Every time he uh, lays out the strategy to the to the men, they always oh. laugh at this one. Well, it's not a joke. It's <laughs> Alpha Team is going to go through the front. Beta Team is going to penetrate through the rear. <laughs> they always laugh at that. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't know if he don't get. He, the, he's he's he, antiing the joke. That's what it is. Right, because he was. I say it's all funny here. It's like they did that begin earlier in, in the um, uh, when yeah. he made the um, when they. Uh, Raided right the funeral home, where uh, where uh, he say that, and they just all laugh. Like, do you not know the the sexual innuendo on in that phrase? Yeah, or he's just, or he's he just, just he's just antiing the whole thing. He's yeah, refu- he's refusing to. I, I mean, I know that they pretty damn unprofessional and juvenile, but it, you know, you know, you're gonna penetrate through the rear. It's like. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I mean, it's just the fact that the fact that he don't get that joke is just yeah. funny to me. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, that's the joke is him not getting the jokes. So. Yeah, I know <laughs> the, uh, his personality. Yeah. But uh, so they go to the train station, and and as we know that they already said they're gonna go out in a blaze of glory, and uh, they're not gonna be basically they're not gonna go alive. They're gonna go out shooting, and they said that they want to die with a gun in their hand. Yep. Um. So it's on, and then. They got a lot of a lot of cops surrounding, and they got this moment. It's actually a good, well shot scene, um, well directed show, a well directed episode. And uh, basically, they got the cops coming in, and Zamaro kind of looking around, and things don't seem right. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know exactly what she noticed because I couldn't tell, but it seemed to me that um, maybe the she saw cops that was dressed in civilian clothes because it seemed like they all had on plaid jackets. Everybody she noticed had a plaid jacket on. Huh. I think I, I that's why I'm, I'm, I think I saw that. Like, she noticed a guy right here with a plaid jacket. She knew, like, a guy over here with a plaid jacket and a guy over here had a plaid jacket. And I think maybe that was them dressed in civilian clothes to try to close in on them. But she was noticing that. And, and then she saw Deffy at the top. And then they kind of, when they, once they locked eyes, yeah. it, it was, was on. on. <laughs> yeah. And she kind of gave this little, I don't know, kind of gave a little smile. And guess she's like, you know, you ain't well, going to take me go. alive, you know, or whatever. I thought she just had a shotgun, but she had like, a, she no, had some she had nasty that typewriter. under that front She coat. had that typewriter, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dang, what she got? That one. Anyway, that she let loose. That might have been a Chicago type, right? That might have been a Tommy gun. But I was surprised to see how many civilians got killed. I thought they was just going to take yeah. out the cops. Uh, no. So they um, had a scene after. It's kind of like we kind of see the aftermath of it where it's dead bodies everywhere. So yeah. we got the cops dead, but then we, we got, got a lot, lot of civilians of just dead. Damage, man. Just, I'm like, oh, my God. She was, she was not choosy with the shots. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I don't know where she... Maybe, you know, I bet you, somebody said, I bet you some of the cops shot some of them people try to shoot them. <laughs> but, that's not, but that's not going to report, though. When, when, <laughs> the way they came down the stairs, when she opened up. It looked like all of them got killed before they even got down those stairs. Yeah. <laughs> they just thought blood just started Man. flying. But uh, it was a big shootout. Uh, and the Swanee, you know, she had two pistols, too. Uh, now, this thing, I thought was a little odd how they shot this. Now, I ain't going to say odd. I just, I feel like they could have done this part better. Where basically it was over, the uh, they ran out of bullets and Deffy had them cornered. But the way it seemed, it seemed kind of staged. If yeah. I don't know, because okay, so oh, we've got Palomino Otis was with Deffy and he was 
He stayed in a car <laughs> because <laughs> he was actually scared. And he, I swear, when all the shooting was happening, he's still messing with the locks. Mm-hmm. I was like, this dude, you know what? I was liking Otis. Now, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I'm looking like when all the shooting happened, you still over there. Click, 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 <laughs> click, 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 Five click. little, six little Indians, <laughs> all that, yeah. Oh, and then when he gave his explanation why his tics and stuff and why he became a cop, and I'm like, I was like, I don't feel sorry for you. No. Uh, I thought you had a nice story. No, he became a cop for all the wrong reasons. For all the wrong reasons, and then, and then everything he thought didn't happen, all, all the stuff. He thought he can get some power by uh, being a cop. Oh, but but cops uh, being a cop is you you uh, b- it's b- risky. No kidding. <laughs> okay, so I thought I could uh, eliminate some of that risk by becoming a dirty cop, and you made it more. You made it worse on yourself. Yeah, and it's then like, lo- so oh, then he lost the power and up the risk. And I'm looking like, dude, you're an idiot. Yeah. And I thought that, and then I thought maybe the. The, what happened in the war gave him the OCD, but he said he had it all his life. Yeah. So I'm like, oh. Uh. Like, they ruined his character with this episode. I know. <laughs> I was like, because I had, uh, I just thought he, you know, I had I had sympathy because I thought he had OCD because what happened to his wife and what happened in the military, you know, uh, being a, um, a person that so you was a coward, like they said, yeah. and caused the death of your men yeah. in the military. And you still was a coward and you didn't even go and back up uh, Daffy. And let's talk about what happened. So once Daffy had them cornered and and he thought that, um, you know, he, I, you know, it just spoiled the discussion because yeah. we got to talk about this. Right. So, Otis come in and uh, we thinking he's going to back up. We don't know exactly what's going to happen because he basically gave Daffy this speech like, I want to be a cop again. I want to help you make this bus. And I'm thinking, okay, he's going to stand up to Lloyd and tell them, hey, I ain't no criminal no more. And I was like, look, at the end of the day, if you just lay low, they're they going to end up killing each other anyway. True. Ain't nobody going to even know who you are. You're going, to be, you're, going, you're going to be a cop. You can just come in and arrest whoever's left and whatever. Uh, that's not quite what happened. Um, so Daffy got him cornered. Now, like I said, this scene felt a little funny because yeah. – uh, it just didn't seem right. Well, it looks staged. It doesn't look organic. Right. So I thought the way that it looked, it felt like they, it's like they was bullshitting. Like he was about to be like, I got him. Uh, I got him. Like I got him. They ran out of bullets. Go ahead. Give him. Cuff him. I thought he was about to say, all right, now get out of here, ladies. Or something. I thought yeah. Deffy was about to tell him to leave or something because he took a deal or something, which uh, Deffy was kind of incorruptible. But the way it looked, it didn't look real. Yeah. It looked like. They staged it for, or or he's gonna shoot, uh, uh, Otis. Yeah. Because it didn't feel like a real organic yeah. scene. That it what was I well thought, shot up to that point. Yeah. What I thought was gonna happen was like Zamara and Swanee were like working for Otis to help. Work, I mean, working with Daffy to try to get some kind of in on this whole game. Or something, and, something we didn't know was yeah. about to come out right yeah. there. Yeah. Like I'm sure it's like the second he goes to to come, it's like. By the way, real sorry about this, Palomino. Yeah, you know. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? And which would be a real big twist because he'd been a real straight shooter the whole show. Um, but, okay, that's not what happened. Um, he's like, you know, go ahead, cuff him. And he shoot Daffy. Yeah. And I'm like, what the? Damn. And I was like, oh, wait, wait. Daffy's smart. He got a vest on. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something. Like, and like I'm looking at this whole scene, I'm like, "There's no way Daffy's dead. There's no way." Yeah, man. They kind of they they shot him, man. They killed him. And I was like, uh, "I like that character," but you know, like we said, at, at this point, characters gonna have to go. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, um, it wasn't a big dramatic kill. It was just like a quick little shot it was just and ah. one, and, one and done. You know, what I'm saying like, "Oh, that that's pretty anticlimactic for a great character." And then I was like, and like, okay, well, his job was to let them get away then. And he turned around and shoot well, Swanee well, in the no, head. No, because, like, I think he was telling, so this is the thing. Up until that moment, I think he was telling the absolute truth. I think he, he did talk to Lloyd. Lloyd told him that, the, that, they had to, that they had to go. And he was going to take his life back, but that cowardice snuck up on him. Well, the thing is, I guess maybe he wouldn't have 
had a chance to, if he would have just shot them in front of Daffy, Daffy wouldn't have let him go probably. Well, like, because I think he his hope was that they that by he would make it in there in time for it to be part of the firefight or they'd go right, down in the firefight. Them out. But then once it got up to it, and he was hoping he wouldn't have to make a choice. That's what he was hoping. Maybe. But the fact that he shot Daffy pissed me off. But then also shot Swiney. I'm like, well, well. And then, then, oh, my God. Then mm-hmm. you so dumb, you don't even finish the job. Yeah. Because Zamara get away. Like, he lost his nerve halfway through. And I'm, I'm surprised su- she didn't just I, whoop I, his I, ass. I was expecting her to throw him through a wall, man. Man, I mean, because the thing is, you know, she kind of just like, she lost it and, and came at him. I was like, okay, now shoot her. <laughs> Did he miss or yeah, or whatever? And then she just knocked him out, knocked him down, and kept running. But she, she on a warpath. I don't know what she gonna do. Well, like, cause I, she, there's she, no way, she gonna pop up somewhere. There's later. no way she doesn't draw this back to Loy. Right. So she gonna come after Loy, and that was his the, why he told Deffy to do this. But I'm thinking, like, why do you keep trusting Deffy? Yeah. Not Deffy. I'm sorry. Otis. Otis. Why do you even trust Otis to get the job done? He's He's so twitchy and he's well, like, so he's not a he's not good at this <laughs> at all. Well, because I think at this point, this is one of those things like I think Dr. Senator would have been able to draw him off of this. I don't think Lloyd can tell the difference between like honest desperation and weakness. He thinks that he found because he he thinks he found a pressure point. The problem is Otis is already at the breaking point and he can't see that. Well, what I'm saying is I understand he can get Otis to do his bidding, but I wouldn't expect him to complete well, no, that's the task. What I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he he thinks, I got this guy now. He'll do what I say. No, no, no. He, I understand that, but I don't think he will complete the task. Like, I don't think he's capable. Because he doesn't, he, he, that's where he stopped looking at it. He didn't see beyond that to the fact, oh, this guy's a hot, a hot damn mess. He's going to screw this up. Yeah. So he shot, um, uh, Swanee. Swanee in the straight in the head. Dude, that was look, that was a clean ass but shot. See, but that's thing. The thing is, I was mad, but I was like, well, finish the job so you can, you know, go to Lloyd and tell him, you know, you, you took care of this. And he didn't finish the job. So I'm like, dude, you even whacker. So Otis then, is dead. He just doesn't know it yet. Right. So he didn't finish the job, but Zamara's out there. We don't know. I don't know exactly what he's gonna tell Lloyd. Uh we sure he gonna she gonna come back to him, but the the whole thing is, um, maybe uh, if maybe I mean I was just thinking like if they got taken in, what would that mean to mm. to Lloyd? If they went back to jail, that wouldn't mean nothing to Lloyd. I mean, because even like he what? just couldn't have them alive and out there, right? You know, because like I don't, I, I honestly don't think they they would have set uh, given him up just because it wouldn't fit their code, and they're and they're honest. In their own words, they're honestly got outlaws. They don't have any code. They just do what they Not do. Not even giving them up. They ain't got nothing on them. Right. They like, just, you know, they the already, most, he, and, and, and Def, you already know he's a criminal, so it ain't like yeah. he needed some information on him. No, he already know, but he know his job wasn't to, to stop no syndicate, local syndicate. His job was to t- take them back to jail. Yeah. So, like, I don't think Deffy was even going to be a problem for him if that's they brought them right, in. Right, that's what I'm saying. And I don't see After what's the Deffy point. brought them in, he was taking them right back where right. they came from. So, so I'm not sure why he cared. We're going to move to the end. And, also, and I didn't even talk about the damn. I can't believe we've been talking this long and I didn't even get to the main. Oh, uh, yeah. It's been 30 right. minutes. But anyway, um, we didn't even talk Josto about Josto uh, and uh, G- uh, G- Gitano is. <laughs> I love that scene Man. where he showed him. And I was like, he was like, hey, what's going on, guys? And he show up, boy, and boy, hey, <laughs> I love the fact that it was more than just punch. Like, you know, they could have just had him punch him and it was it. He picked his ass up and threw him through oh, a yeah. table. Yeah. Like, yo, little, bow, just slammed his Dude. ass. I love that scene. And basically beat the crap out of him. But look, that's the funny part. <laughs> After he wake up, <laughs> and I love Josto lying. I don't, I, I don't know if I'm still dreaming or not. <laughs> Where my brother, you wanted me killed. Brilliant! <laughs> I'm looking like you, you murdered their their son, so he would kill me. <laughs> I'm so proud. 
Right, so all he had to do was try to kill Gitano for him to, you know, pledge his loyalty to him. As weird as the scene was, I believe that. Yeah. All he was waiting for was to see that his brother was strong enough to make those yeah. hard decisions. Only Gitano would be happy that somebody tried to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> it's and not even that he tried loyalty to, kill him, to him. It's that he did such a g- more or less good job of setting it up. And I think Dr. Senator um warned him of this like if we do something like that, that could bring them closer together and yep. unite them. We want them at each other's throats or whatever. Right. So Lloyd been making decisions that been backfiring on him a lot in this episode. Uh, where, if we remember, I think was that last episode where he said uh, call Fargo in. Yeah. And um, that really backfired on him too <laughs> because at this Man, time right now. If it wasn't a war before. Right, and at this time right now, it seems like they were at a impasse. Like the war was, it was it was good. Now we we stopped it because New York said, "Hey, we give you more territory. Don't kill Gitano. We give you more territory. That's the price for killing Doctor Senator." Mm-hmm. And um, and you know, give Gitano back. He gave Gitano back. They had no reason to come back at him. It was cool for right now. Uh, I don't know if I can't remember why he. Oh, he called in Fargo because he knew that they got, you know, together, but they had no cause to come at him yet. Right. But they might eventually would have. But so Fargo come in and just <laughs> just start lighting them up with the guns they probably stole from them. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I almost now this scene it. right here. It was played for. It's it's it's. When shows get near the end, they just start throwing shit in there. Yeah. But it's just like, okay, the um, the his immediate family, his sisters and his mom, yeah. we never really seen them. And we the kind of se- see the them second, just so they can get the killed. The very second their mom steps out. We seen them just so they can get killed, just so we can know that they have people that they care about. Yeah. And that's not soldiers. That's not really in the game. And that's kind of breaking the rules of war where don't mess with the immediate family. You got to be a gangster to get killed. You know, and it's kind of like that's kind of a code. They all yeah. kind of, which they wasn't aiming for them, but they they ended up. I don't know how both of them got shot, but hey, whatever. Bullets flying everywhere. Uh, their mother and sister got killed, and uh, and they, and I like Gitano, uh, but uh, Josto man, no, well, well, that's perfect. That, that 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 shows his character. He go hide behind some. He hide behind someone to shoot the story. But I mean, honestly, with that kind of gunfire. Chitano crazy as hell to come out and try to. Uh, he walked right into the gunfire. I don't know. Guns of Kimbo if just he got. Firing. I don't know if he got a uh, uh, the uh, 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 a code they use in video games so bullets go around him. Do what? Uh, well, you his, know it's that stomach. He got his own. His big, field, his man. big two hundred eighty pound ass walking right into gunfire and somehow it's not hitting him. And he got two handguns just taking dudes out. I don't know. I don't know if he's two eighty, man. I'm two eighty. Whatever, three hundred. I'm just saying he's a big dude. Yeah, he covered a lot of space, <laughs> and he's not being moving and around. The second he moved past the fence, they all cut and run too. Right. I mean, he took a couple of them out. All he I think. got is two pistols. Like this. right, he got a couple of them, but he walked right into it. Maybe that's like saying, like this dude crazy. We don't want none of this. <laughs> don't don't mess with crazy, man. Right. Uh, so you know they run off. They didn't even get their target. They got all their bodyguards, but they didn't get the two sons, the two yeah. brothers. But they end up killing their mom and sister. And that's kind of like, um, you know, it's a sad moment, but that's where they end uh, pretty much where they end the yeah. episode, and, right? And the look on Gatano's face, dude. He's re- he's like, if he wasn't out for blood yet. Yeah, I mean, we they actually look sad. And I actually feel bad for him. And I'm like, okay, they played the whole show as Lloyd is kind of like the good guy. And you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we just on Lloyd's side the whole time. And the whole Italian family, we was like, okay, they're kind of like the bad guys. You know, Josto's an asshole. Jan, yeah, yeah. Gitano's a psycho. Right. And they're the bad guys. We, we want Lloyd to win. Lloyd's been kind of honorable and, and kind of doing the right thing. And now at this point uh, – I feel sympathy for the fathers because they immediate family got killed and they didn't even make a move, you know, yeah. and it was kind of like, this is war is getting out of hand and you can't expect them not to take, come back at Lloyd. Now it's 
like you said, it's going to be really, uh, if it wasn't a war before, it's really a war uh, yeah. once they have, because that broke the rules of war. Um, it's kind of like, um, you know, you can't kill civilians, especially the media family, you know. Um, that changes the, everything. That's game changer, you know. Um, so that's pretty much the end of this episode. Uh, did I miss anything? Uh, no. I noticed my time was getting away from us, <laughs> and that's why I was like, let me wrap it up. But I might have missed a little I think something. we're pretty, like, we we pretty much hit everything. I seen the trailer for next season is all going to be about uh, Calamino and uh, Rabbi Milligan. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, uh, don't forget he's still out there and because they did have a um, – the, the mother won't have a funeral, but she don't have a body. But I guess she feel like maybe the body ain't found, but, you know, I'm just going to have a funeral for him, like a closed casket mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but <clears throat> we'll see what's going to happen there. I can't wait to see the next episode because uh, um, the war is on, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But uh, we'll see. Um, Everything's, you know, approaching a, a tipping point right now. So Yeah, and I feel like, Right now, I don't really uh, have no allegiance to neither side because right. both of them done some unforgivable things. I was hoping <laughs> I was about to start rooting for Otis, but he ruined that. Yeah, I don't give a damn about Otis Bell. <laughs> like, dude, you don't have no kind of story I like, and yeah. uh, you're not sympathetic, and, um, you know, um, the character I really like. And at least uh, at least Daffy was fun. Right, but. so we losing to all the best characters, Daffy, Dr. Senator, uh, yeah. uh, well, Swanee. Swanee. Yeah. Um, so we'll see, man. Heck, heck, we lost Otis without him we even still dying. still got o- Olietta. I don't know how long she's going to last. And I feel like Josto going to go pretty soon. So far, everyone that's seen, uh, what did you call him? Mr. Snowman? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the only ones left who, who have been around Mr. Snowman and ain't dead is uh, Lemuel right. and uh, Olietta. And I feel like that's going to come mean, to uh, Ethel Rita. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing it for his family because uh, yep. he did say something, though. Um, uh, Lloyd did say, my family's somewhere safe that you can't get to him or whatever. Mm. And I'm like, well, the, the, the funeral home is right across the street from where Josh Stope be at every damn week. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know because uh, you got your mother and your son was there. So whatever. Anywho, uh, I mean, his uh, wife and son was there. So anyway, that's our review for um, Fargo episode Eight season four episode eight. Uh, be on the lookout for um, uh, our review for episode nine. Uh, well, this one went a little long, man. I'm gonna keep it tight next time. But uh, yeah. sorry, it was a lot of stuff in that episode. Uh, so uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Excuse me if you like these uh, reviews and if you uh, like to hear podcasts and discussion on uh, TV shows and movies and uh, other stuff. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and um, hit the bell icon so you can get alerts every time we post new videos or stream. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below if you've seen this episode and want to talk about it with us. You know, we're going to be checking out the comments. And also go and check out our other videos. You know, as you wa- if you haven't started watching the show, you can watch our show after you watch that show. Yeah, I know. I mean, I love watching podcasts after I watch it just to hear what other people think about right. stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for checking us out. We are out of here. Peace. Peace.